There'd been a suspicious death in a youth hostel in the north of Brittany. Caroline's body was found. She had been raped. Why didn't we arrest him before? Tonight, how remarkable detective work in America helped solve the murder in France of a British schoolgirl. A father's fight for justice, a trail that had gone cold, and the amazing chance discovery that put a killer behind bars for life. In the summertime, Brittany is a, a wonderful place to visit. It's the sort of place where children come for family holidays. Many, many uh, thousands of British school children came to France on school journeys every year. It's the sort of place which is regarded by schools as being a safe place. On the 18th of July, 1996, a school trip from Cornwall was enjoying a stay in Brittany. On that particular day, they'd visited Mont Saint-Michel. Among the party was Caroline Dickinson, a 13-year-old student from Launceston College. She was really the girl next door. A very ordinary girl, according to her parents and all her friends I've spoken to. She used to go to brownies or, or girl guides with her sister, younger sister, Jenny. Uh, a big home girl. She, she liked everything about the home and her family. They were on holiday in France. Uh, it was a foreign country. They'd seen things they'd never seen before. They were having a wonderful time. She hadn't been away from home by herself before. And when she went on this trip, uh, her mother hadn't been too keen. Her father agreed to, to make a contribution. Caroline saved her own pocket money to go. The party was staying at a youth hostel in the small village of Plaine Fougere. A very sleepy, small, rural village. One or two shops, a couple of bars, the auberge. Been there for many years. On the evening, Caroline Dixon sang songs with her friends. They were excited. They were sleeping together in a foreign dormitory in a foreign country. The smells were different. It was a very hot night, and the stars were in the sky. And Camilla, this other girl who was in a bunk uh, above Caroline, who was on a mattress on the floor, uh, eventually told me that the last thing she remembers is, is them, all of them, including Caroline, looking out at this uh, beautiful black night with the, the stars and Caroline singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. They were probably the last thing she said and they, they all drifted off to sleep. They'd had a wonderful adventure and then during the night this horror scenario had to happen. A British schoolgirl has been raped and suffocated on a school holiday to France. Four friends of Caroline Dickinson, who was 13, woke up to find her murdered in her bed in the dormitory they were sharing. The attack happened at a hostel in a small Brittany village where the group from a Cornwall school were staying. I don't think I shall ever forget that morning. I had a phone call from the sous-prefecture uh, advising me that a schoolgirl uh, on visit to France with a group of children had died and uh, they would appreciate uh, my presence. And. Subsequently, the name Caroline Dickinson was, was given to the, the victim of, of what uh, very rapidly uh, uh, transpired to, to, to be a murder, and a murder uh, committed under horrific circumstances. As the news spread, the small Cornish community of Launceston was stunned. It was a town in absolute and utter shock. Um, I remember talking to Caroline's grandfather very briefly but to walking around the town and trying to talk to uh, other children and parents and so on, everyone really was just too stunned to talk. The college is devastated by the news of Caroline's death. Caroline was a lovely girl. She worked hard, she had lots of friends, she always had a ready smile. She was quiet, she was gentle. She was a credit to our college. The headline was something like every every parent's worst nightmare. Uh, it was uh, a nightmare for the, for the Dickinson family. It was every parent's worst nightmare. There were 40 odd kids on this trip who, who suffered horribly and their parents must have gone through uh, 
you know, hell, because they had the briefest of conversations. And you can imagine the state, the, the girls and the, and the two or three boys, but the girls in particular were on. For Caroline Dickinson's parents, John and Sue, the nightmare was worst of all. I was informed they would be uh, arriving. I took them away to a quiet hotel and I did my best to put pressure on the, uh, the, the commanding officer of, of the gendarmerie force there um, to, for Caroline's uh, parents to see the body, which they wished to do. The murder had sent shockwaves through the local community of Plan Fougere. Gendarmes, uh, who I knew, uh, you know, from uh, the years of, of my work, uh, come up to me and say, we'll get the, you know, we'll get not to worry, we'll get, they were furious. I'm such a, uh, you know, a tender young kid and uh, it was just awful. It was awful for France. As the investigation got underway, crucial questions were being asked. How on earth could a predator, under those circumstances, uh, have entered that room, occupied by five teenage girls? How on earth could he possibly have committed uh, a crime like that without the other uh, four girls in the room uh, hearing anything or waking, waking up? All berges are kept open for security reasons. There is always an open door, fire or something like that, an emergency to evacuate the place by law. That was the rules at, at, at the time. The two witnesses who were eventually called, two of the other girls in the room, one uh, felt she heard uh, Caroline uh, moaning, just thought she was having a nightmare. One of the other girls half felt she saw a shadow and thought it was Caroline or one of the other girls going to the toilet. In the first few days after the murder, Plan Fougere was swamped by local gendarmes, desperately hunting the killer. The man in charge of the investigation was Judge Zaug. But from the beginning, his inquiry was shrouded in secrecy, even to the Dickinson family. In the early stages of the, the investigation, there was, a, there was a wall, a blank wall. As far as we, we, we as journalists, attempting to, to, to cover this case, we were told absolutely nothing about any uh, of the uh, witness reports. In a similar situation in England, there certainly would have been press conferences and the police certainly would have perhaps referred to the statements of witnesses. But Judge Zaug's methods appeared to bring quick results. French police took just two days to catch the man they say has confessed to killing Caroline Dickinson at this youth hostel. At a press conference, the French magistrate who led the murder hunt gave details of the man they're holding. The suspect is believed to be a 40-year-old drifter already convicted of a previous rape. The man who confessed to the murder was a local vagrant, Patrice Padet. Patrice Padet was a, a man with previous sexual... Uh, convictions, quite serious uh, sexual, sexual com convictions. He was a man with an alcohol problem, he was a man with a drug problem, he was a drifter. He'd been picked up by, by a gendarme in a van who actually stopped to give him a lift uh, and then realised that he, he corresponded with a, with a photo fit. They were very, very pleased indeed that uh, within a few days, well, I think it was within a week, they had uh, caught somebody. But hopes for a quick resolution to the murder were soon to be dashed. DNA tests were carried out on Pade, and the, the, his genetic profile was compared with the uh, semen found uh, at the scene of the crime on, on, on Caroline Dickinson's body. Unfortunately for, for Monsieur Zog, and unfortunately for the uh, initial team of investigators, Patrice Pade had been uh, cleared by the DNA test. His DNA profile didn't correspond with the profile of the murderer. Events proved, and very quickly, that he was not the perpetrator. They were back to square one. In July 1996, Caroline Dickinson, a 13-year-old student from Cornwall, was raped and murdered in a tiny French village while on a school trip. After the first prime suspect had been proved innocent, the French police, led by Judge Zaug, were still hunting the real killer. Back in the town of Launceston, Caroline's funeral took place. 
the, the church, which is just off the square in Lonston, was just absolutely packed. And not, not just everybody from the school, including all the poor children who were on the trip, uh, but, but many of the sort of the townsfolk. This girl was one of their own. It's not a huge town, Lonston, and uh, the town all felt that they'd suffered a grievous loss. Everyone hoped Caroline's killer would soon be caught. But as the months passed by, it seemed little progress was being made. 8 a.m. in the village of Plenforger, the time and the place Caroline Dickinson was found murdered. One year on, there are no reminders of the schoolgirl who died here, no leads to the man who raped and suffocated her. They were trying very, very hard, but of course it was too late because all of their, the, the, during the, the first uh, crucial days of the, the inquiry, all of their attention had been on interrogating Patrice Padé. Ever since her murder, Caroline's father, John Dickinson, had made numerous public appeals for help. I've come here to appeal to the people of Brittany for their help in finding the perpetrator of this monstrous crime. And I would plead for anybody who might have information to please come forward urgently to the judge or the police. It was very much the urgings and the promptings of, of John, particularly on his visits and through his French lawyer, that, that gave the, um, the, the French a kick up the butt. John Dickinson was becoming increasingly frustrated with the progress of the French inquiry. I really do think that the English public at large had this vision of these, these, these bungling Inspector Clusos, uh, you know, getting nowhere and just making fools of themselves, and it really felt like that. He'd become more and more convinced Judge Zaug's leadership of the investigation was the problem. Uh, as time's gone on, his um, arrogance almost has got to me, and uh, it is really rather annoying. In what way? Uh, in that he, he, he seems to feel that he doesn't have to inform anybody about what he's doing, that he is a law unto himself. To many, it seemed John Dickinson was keeping the investigation going single-handedly. Here was a man who was extremely determined. Uh, he spoke little or no French. He was in a land he didn't know. He was faced with a judicial system, a legal system, which, which was a mystery to him. Mr. Dickinson became convinced that the French investigation was deeply flawed on a number of counts. Crucial witness statements were ignored. Vital fingerprints from the murder scene were never taken. In the critical first few days following the murder, routine door-to-door -door inquiries were not conducted in Plain Fougere. And critically, his request that the authorities test the DNA of the local male population was denied by Judge Zaug. Eventually, John Dickinson had had enough. The Dickinsons went to the Foreign Office with one simple demand, put pressure on France to find our daughter's killer. I'm hoping that uh, the French will realise that uh, we do not intend to sit back and, and keep quiet about this. In August 1997, after a legal action brought by John Dickinson and intense media pressure, Jed Zaug was sacked. We are very pleased, very pleased indeed with the news uh, that uh, the Court of Appeal have uh, decided to take over the case. His replacement was Judge Rowanbeck, who promised a fresh start to the inquiry. The fact that there was a new judge on the case was directly due to legal action uh, taken by the Dickinsons. When I got the file, I read the file for, first, but we didn't have a foot of it. We didn't have... Uh, leads. Uh, it was a very difficult case. Uh, it was one year later. So um, I had to, to have a new look on the, on the file. Progress was swift. Rombeck immediately ordered fresh door to door inquiries in Plain Fougere, plus the re interviewing of the key witnesses to Caroline's murder. This produced a new photo fit of the killer which was quickly made public. The judge also granted John Dickinson's request to DNA test the male population of Plain Fougere, something which caused quite a stir. Because it was the first real mass DNA testing uh, that had ever happened in, 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 in France. We saw images of old French men, uh, I say old French men, middle-aged French men in, in, in their jackets and their berets walking into the uh, the town hall where the DNA tests were, were going to take place. There was a certain pathetic element to it. One, one, one saw these, these perfectly innocent uh, men 